Yes, we hear you loud and clear. And welcome to the station. How do you hear us? I hear you loud and clear. Thank you very much for your invitation. And uh, hello again to Mr. Tingle. Just a month ago, we spoke with him, yet on, on the Earth, and now it's from the orbit. So, uh, first of all, hello again. Me, it's uh, great to be speaking uh, speaking with you. Here, and uh, my first question is about the holiday itself. How actually did uh, the crew celebrate the New Year and Christmas? Uh, because I know that uh, you are uh, tied to a particular Greenwich time. But someone mentioned that you did it many times on the orbit. On the orbit. Well, the holidays were a special time for all of us. Uh, obviously, we, this is all three of our first times up on station, and to spend it here on ISS, uh, what a unique opportunity to do that, uh, especially with the, the, the colleagues that uh, that we are, and uh, the years that we've known each other. It was very special, uh, sp very special time in our lives. Uh, we did spend it uh, by talking with our families a little bit on. Uh, on uh, some video conferencing and with phone calls, uh, but uh, the Christmas time was a little bit busy. We had a lot of work to do with uh, with uh, some cargo ops with the Dragon that's attached to, or docked to uh, ISS. And uh, on New Year's Day, we uh, we do took a little bit of time off, uh, but uh, more importantly, we uh, celebrated by having a nice good dinner with uh, with our Russian colleagues down in the Russian segment. They were they were very ho hospitable to us, and uh, and it was fun to uh, sit and relax with them. Uh, speaking of a good dinner, did actually uh, Mission Control allow you a sip of champagne there? <laughs> no, I think the question was, uh, did we, were we allowed champagne? Um, no, we're not allowed any alcohol, but uh, our Russian crewmates uh, went ahead and made us some grape juice with uh, labels that made it look like we had champagne, so that was kind of fun to pretend. Uh, speaking about holidays on the orbit, there's a multinational crew, and definitely uh, depends on the uh, national holidays, religious holidays. You could uh, celebrate them many times. Do you usually do it all together, or there's like separate groups that celebrate uh, in their corners? That's a really good question. Uh, we come from, uh, we have 16 to 18 international partners that make up the ISS uh, program, and, uh, and we all work very hard together. Uh, right now we have uh, three uh, nationalities, being Russia, Japan, and America, on board uh, uh, in, a, in the close quarters. Uh, so we recognize uh, each other's holidays, and we celebrate their holidays, they celebrate our holidays. We uh, respect uh, uh, all of our different cultures, and we celebrate in the togetherness uh, on the special days that our friends have. I oftentimes heard about uh, American wing and the Russian wing on this station. So uh, basically what we see when the new crew arrives on the orbit, that everybody's hugging, uh, posing together for the camera, but then uh, it looks like the work goes to the different parts of the station, it's like one house but different apartments. Uh, is that how the work is usually built there? You're all separate, or how often do you actually come together and do some, some uh, experiments and stuff all together, Russians, Americans, and the others? So it's t it is definitely one crew, but our work is controlled by, on the U.S. segment, that means uh, Japan, the United States right now, um, we have our, our plan put together largely by, by uh, uh, Mission Control Center in Houston leading other nations. And then the Russian crew members, uh, are, their day is controlled um, largely separately. So yes, most of our day we're not interacting. Um, we certainly come together for special dinners and we have a movie night together. And sometimes, for example, especially when we only had three crew members on the station, we were shorthanded for some work, and we asked the Russians to help, and they came in and joined up when it was really crucial to make that happen. 
but but you're right. Most of our day is uh, largely spent separately. You mentioned the movie nights. And uh, what languages are those movies? And uh, what kind of movies can you mention? What kind of movies? Any kind of movies, if we want. Uh, we can ask the ground flight controllers to uplink the movies. So we actually, we are picking up uh, one person at a time and that person select the movie and we ask that movie for the ground to uplink to watching on board the station. So what was the last one? Probably Last Jedi or sort of? Well, the, uh, the last uh, movie night was a Russian pick and they picked the uh, 310 to Yuma. I know that uh, being prepared by the Rose Cosmos uh, program, you have uh, several uh, certain procedures uh, according to the Russian space program, including uh, learning Russian language. And they also have some traditions like watching certain movies before launching of, uh, on the orbit. How, did you actually follow those steps as American or uh, Japanese crew? Absolutely. As we're preparing for a launch, it's a great time to follow those traditions. They're actually a lot of fun. And uh, the Bieli Pustine. Uh, Bieli Estonce Pustine. That's it. I for nice. Thank you for saving me from that. That uh, movie is actually pretty entertaining, especially when uh, we're helped out with the English subtitles. So what would you say about this tradition of blessing of the rocket by a priest? Does it something like that exist in, in NASA, in NASA, in the United States? <laughs> That's a really good question. Uh, none of us have gone through a launch in the United States, uh, so uh, we're not really uh, not really sure. Um, uh, that's, I'm going to look into that, and uh, hopefully the next time we talk, I'll have a good answer for you. Uh, speaking of launch in the United States, we know that there are at least two such launches uh, planned for next summer, uh, including private corporations. Could you share with us uh, maybe some of your friends, maybe you already uh, aware about who is scheduled for that flight? Those decisions have uh, not been made yet. Um, you know, we have uh, a select crew at uh, at NASA and uh, that uh, are working the programs, but the uh, the final decisions have not been made. And uh, as soon as they are, I'm sure they'll be published. Uh, so today we've seen a very exciting video from SpaceX. Uh, they already uh, uh, put vertical the uh, Falcon Heavy uh, rocket with. Uh, I'm surprised a Tesla car inside of it. So do you think it's kind of a PR move from Elon Musk or this is a real big move uh, for the space exploration? Well, launching a, a car into space, I, I don't think really has a whole lot of utility other than to show that you can, you can do it. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's a big move for, for Elon Musk and SpaceX. So God bless him. I wish him, the, wish him the best luck in the world. Uh, right before the new year, uh, President Trump uh, announced the new goals for NASA in space. And someone noticed that instead of uh, uh, direct Mars exploration, he shifted the attention uh, to moon, to returning to moon. Do you think this is a uh, wise step or maybe how it, could it actually get us closer to the other planets? I think it's an extremely wise step. I think the moon provides us an excellent opportunity to rehearse um, relatively close to the Earth, um, inhabiting an, a, a planetary-sized object um, with the ability, if, if things go wrong, to uh, get people back 
fairly easily, relatively easily, certainly compared to going to the Mars. I think it's a going to be a huge, big, a huge step for humanity to have a lasting presence any place other than the Earth, other than low Earth orbit. So I'm really looking forward to uh, getting people on the moon, keeping them there for long periods of time, and then using that as a way to test out equipment to get ready to make sure we do it safely when we finally do get to Mars. And the other news about Moon, uh, which went virtually unnoticed, uh, that was the uh, Congress, big Congress in Australia, when there was announced that uh, United States and Russia are going to uh, build together a station, space station on the Moon orbit, to further advance to Mars. Uh, could you further comment on this? Uh, because it's uh, based on the date that they were provided. It's pretty close, like first module could be there already in 2024. Going back to the moon is a, is a bigger project than a lot of people think. Uh, the, just because we've done it before uh, doesn't mean that we're, we're that close to, uh, to doing it now. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of engineering to do. We've got a lot of planning to do. We've got a lot of operations to do. Um, and it's going to be expensive. It's going to take a lot of manpower. It's going to take a lot of thinking outside the box to, uh, to make it as quickly as an, and efficiently as we can. And we can't do that alone. We're, we're going to need to do it with international partners. Um, so I, I do believe that, uh, that the international partnership will work. I believe it'll be uh, necessary to really have a good product and to, to be able to achieve success in, uh, with that mission goal. Um, out of the blue, if I ask you, what do you regard as the biggest uh, space uh, achievement of the last year? 2017, what would you name? I think sending uh, Noroshige Kanai and Scott Tingle to the space station was the biggest achievement, and it's a wonderful thing having these guys up here. That's a huge burst of energy, and it's, we're really having a great time getting a lot of stuff done since they've arrived. That's wonderful, gentlemen. My final question, uh, probably this is yet the New Year mood, especially in Russia when they have all uh, vacation uh, for next week until the Orthodox Christmas. Uh, would you wish something for our audience and probably in Russian, if you if you wish? Я очень рад работать на станции и и с новым годом. Да, я согласен с Новым Годом и большое спасибо за все. Uh, вы делаете. Thank you very much again. Uh, thank you for your time. Have a good flight and uh, many more exciting experiments on the orbit. Thanks a lot. Okay. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from uh, Voice of America. Uh, we are now resuming operational audio communications.